What's up guys, it's your girl T coming at you on a Saturday. We are nearing the end of week one of the September Shred Challenge, so I thought I'd hop on today, do a somewhat unplanned video, play in some new makeup bits and bobs that I picked up and hang out with you guys. I would normally be against doing back-to-back -back Get Ready With Me videos, but on my last Get Ready With Me, which was my last video, quite a few of you guys said that you actually like my Get Ready With Me videos because I give good talk, which, <laughs> thank you. But seriously, folks, I am just myself on this channel and in these videos, so the fact that any of you guys respond to that and we befriend each other in the comments section and support each other and lift each other up, that is why I do this, because it certainly isn't for the money. YouTube AdSense is, uh, it's not keeping my lights on, let's put it that way. Anyway, I have quite a few new makeup items I have uh, tried out and put on my face today and some oldies but goodies. As you can see, I went for a few things that are uncharacteristic. I did a colorful eye with this teal situation. And then with a bold eye, I did a bold lip. Bold eye and bold lip at the same damn time. Perhaps I'm losing my mind, I don't know. But uh, I think I was just having fun, having a little makeup playtime. Usually if I'm putting on makeup, it's because I have to. I have to do an on-camera gig at work or I have to just look presentable for some reason or another. I pretty much never put on makeup just to play in it. And I did that today and it was fun. So maybe we'll do some more makeup playtime slash September Shred Challenge check-ins throughout the next six weeks to uh, kill two birds, I guess. Anyway, that is enough prologue. Let's go ahead and uh, get into this Get Ready With Me. As usual, I'm gonna start out priming my eyeballs. So first things first, how are all y'alls doing? Based on the response I got on the announcement video for the September Shred Challenge, quite a few of you are participating, which is dope. Today, which is Saturday, the 26th is day six of the challenge. First week is probably the hardest week for me typically, unless that trend continues throughout an entire challenge, which has happened before and I just have a hard time the entire time. But I'm in pretty good spirits. I definitely had some minor fuck it moments in the first week. I've completed four of my five workouts. I'm planning to do my fifth workout for week one tomorrow. My friend teaches spin class, which means I get in for free. But I do find that working out more than four or so days in a row is not super great for me. I tend to find that my performance goes downhill and it starts to suffer just from fatigue. Oh, by the way, for eyes today, I'm gonna be using the Sephora Pro Editorial Palette. I mentioned that I had picked this up in my previous Get Ready With Me, and quite a few of you expressed interest in seeing me do a Get Ready With Me with this palette. It is completely uncharacteristic for me to pick up a palette that looks like this, because look at all these bright colors, and I'm team taupe. I don't know, I'm feeling more adventurous, I'm feeling a little bit spicy, and some of the colors in here really just attracted me, in particular, this teal color right here, I think I'm gonna work with that today because I've always been very drawn to teals. I've liked them ever since I was a little girl. But before I go in with that teal color, I need to lay something down in my crease area to transition because that's a bright color and I'm nervous. So overall for week one, if I had to give myself a grade in this September Shred Challenge of ours, I'd probably give myself 80, maybe an 85, uh, no, probably closer to an 80. So I have to make sure that I'm a lot more disciplined from here on out. The initial impressions on this teal shade is it's kicking up a ton in the pan. It reminds me of the Kat Von D shade and light palette, which I have and love, but those shadows are super pigmented and therefore they tend to kick up a lot of product in the pan when you dip your brush in. These ones feel drier but they are very pigmented, or at least this shade is very pigmented. And from the reviews I've seen, most of them are also quite pigmented. And you know, I'm getting, I don't wanna spill it everywhere because you might be able to see there's like a little bit of dust kind of gathering in the pan there. I use that. Uh, if I'm still using that color when I'm putting my look together, I just dip my brush in that kind of kick up and I use that to pack on my eye or whatever I'm doing. Yeah, this shade, it's pretty, but it's a little patchy. I'm finding myself having to go over areas that might lift up as I'm trying to pack on the shadow. It'll seem to kind of lift up in some spots. There's that old cliche, failure to plan is planning to fail. And I fell victim to that slightly this week with not doing any sort of cooking or meal prep. Because really, who the fuck wants to meal prep? That's the last thing I wanna do with my Sunday or you know my free time is cook all day. 
So I was doing a lot of responsible takeout, if you will, going to places and getting salads and things like that. But it's a pain in the ass to have to do that too. I mean, ultimately, I'm not saving myself any time at all by not just making a big pot of chili or something, which, you know, that might take me an hour or two at home, but I'm spending way more time having to figure out where the fuck I'm going to get lunch and dinner every day. It's Saturday today, like I said, and hopefully you guys will be seeing this on Saturday. But tomorrow I'm going to go ahead and make a big pot of chili, and that'll be my dinners for the week. And that way, whenever I get off work each day, I can come straight home and know that there's food there for me to eat. It takes so much off my mind to not have to worry about that. And I'm also, when I'm at the grocery store, going to get stuff for salads. So I can just pack salads to bring to work for lunch every day instead of spending 12 bucks on a fucking salad every time I need lunch. So it took a little bit of building and a little bit of work, but I think we've got a pretty nice base down of this teal shadow. I'm gonna bring the teal color a bit higher, but I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of this sort of cyan blue. I've been having a lot of technical difficulties at home with uploading my videos because my internet service provider sucks. So I finally got my act together and went to Best Buy yesterday to buy myself a new router because I thought that might help. Because the ones that you rent from the ISPs are always the cheapest, worst technology available. And then they just charge you every month to give you the shittiest version of whatever that piece of technology is. And I was already sort of like, oh, I want to get a new ISP altogether, but there's so few options in my area because everything is a fucking racket and a monopoly, which is true. There's basically two, maybe three choices for where I live and none of them are all that fast. But because I upload videos to YouTube, I need a faster upload speed than half a fucking megabyte per second in 2017. Ridiculous. I don't know how I've put up with it this long, but it finally became time to come to an end. And while I was at the Best Buy, there was a guy there from the other company, the competitor company, just the store rep. And he was just like, well, I can set you up with free installation possibly as soon as tomorrow if you're interested. And I was just like, I am interested. And the guy came this morning, I've got new internet service. I did a speed test after he finished the install through a third party site. And by the way, always do it through a third party site. Never use the speed test that's built into your ISP's website because it's horseshit. And my upload speed is now 10 megabytes per second, which is nothing to write home about, but it's 10 times faster than the best possible speed my old provider could have gotten me. Before I had a maximum of one megabyte per second, probably under that typically, which again, it's 2017, that's fucking unacceptable. So to know that I'll be able to upload videos much faster and without as many problems, hopefully, ideally, we'll see is really exciting because it's encouraging me to upload more often. Having to sit around and babysit and upload for an hour and a half, two hours is not the business and it certainly has affected how frequently I make videos because it's a deterrent. By the way, there's a ton of fallout on my face from these eyeshadows and I'm not happy about that. I am suffering for y'all today. I don't have my fan on even though I really, really need to have it on. So I'm schwitzing here while I'm putting on this makeup because I've gotten a ridiculous amount of fallout here. I'm gonna go ahead and do my under eye shadow now because I don't wanna do it after my foundation and then just fuck up my foundation. I don't know if you guys can see just how patchy this is, but I'm not impressed. This palette might be getting returned, girl. And these Sephora Natasha Denona wannabe looking palettes are not cheap. They're close to 70 bucks. I am going to clean up all the freaking ridiculous fallout that's on my face and I'll be right back. Much has actually happened since that last cut during Project Fallout. I decided to go ahead and basically do all the stuff that I hate doing on camera, like tight lining, doing my waterline, mascara, lashes, all that stuff is pretty boring to watch and I generally do worse with it when I have to do it on camera. But I've got very watery eyes. I think I've mentioned that in a get ready with me before because it tends to create problems for me sometimes when I'm doing my makeup, and it certainly did today. I had to dip back into here and touch up the shadow on the inner part of my lid, and it's still actually quite fucked up on both eyes. It was lifting off worse than what I usually deal with when my eyes start watering. I'm just trying to touch up the shadow that looks completely messed up. I don't know if you guys are even able to see it on camera, but in real life it looks pretty bad. 
eyes are pretty much done, so let's move on to skin. I've got quite a few new makeup products I picked up. Ulta just had another 20% off coupon that actually included fragrance. So I picked up some stuff from there, including this new Becca primer. This is the Becca Velvet Blurring Primer Perfecting Base. This one has an apricot color to it, which I don't think it's pigmented enough to really do much in terms of helping to color correct for me, but I wanted to try it anyway to see about this velvet blurring situation. As you may or may not know, I generally don't do hauls because while I do enjoy watching them at times, I feel like conceptually it's kind of a fucked up thing. It's basically a person just saying, look at what I bought. So I limit my hauls to when I can promote black businesses, small businesses, or other minority owned businesses, stuff like that. I try to kind of have more of a purpose to my hauls other than just showing you shit that I bought. So I've only done, I think, maybe two hauls ever. One was my All Black Friday haul, which I'll link here, and that was literally only things from Black-owned businesses that I purchased during Black Friday sales. This Becca primer does indeed feel very velvety, or at least it made my skin feel very velvety. I feel like it might be good for oily skin types because usually that's what they're going after with like velvet and stuff like that. I also picked up the Urban Decay Naked Skin Color Corrector in the shade Deep Peach. I wanted to try this because the Urban Decay Naked Concealer is a very thin, lightweight texture. And I was like, well, if this color corrector is anything like that concealer, then I should like it. What would you guys think if I did do a haul of some of this newer stuff that I bought or things that I've gotten recently and haven't been trying out that long? Would you even want to see that? Because I still feel some type of way if I don't think there's some sort of greater purpose to hauling like I did with my All Black Friday haul. I'm gonna go over this with a foundation that I already know and trust, and that is the Maybelline Matte and Poreless in the shade Classic Tan. Anyway, let me know what you guys would think about me doing basic bitch YouTube hauls, where it's literally just, I'm not helping to support slash promote black owned businesses necessarily. I'm literally just showing you guys some things I picked up. Cause I, even if you guys say you wanna see that, I might not do it. I really have, strong feelings slash mixed feelings about it and I don't know if it's something that I want to be a part of. I don't know if that's a game I want to play. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Today is August 26 and next thing you know it's going to be September 2017 is flying by which you know is good and bad. The sooner we can get that rotting pumpkin grand wizard out of office the better I say. Though I don't see him completing his term anyway. I'm looking forward to September though. I'll be going to Chicago and I haven't been to Chicago in years. It is one of my favorite places in the United States, probably in the world. But I haven't been to Chicago in a pretty long time and I'm excited to be going again, especially for a wedding because weddings are super fun. I have no interest in getting married myself, but I do love a good wedding. Oh, let me give you guys the tea on these twists before I forget because a lot of people were asking me if I did a tutorial on the install. No, I did not. There are myriad tutorials on YouTube of people installing jumbo Senegalese twists and the entire point of any video I do, nay of my channel as a whole, is to bring something to YouTube that I am not seeing anywhere else or to at least bring a perspective, point of view, voice to YouTube that I feel is not being given elsewhere. If I feel like I have nothing to add to a conversation or information that's already out there, then I don't duplicate it. I don't really think anyone needs to see me doing such a Bush League hatchet job of installing some Jumbo Senegalese twists. It's pretty straightforward. I did the braided root, you know, pretty standard because this is not kinky hair, so you can't really get away with doing the invisible method. Trust me, I learned that the hard way. I did have to put rubber bands on the ends the next day because they kept unraveling and I was getting pissed off. So I ran to Target and got just some of those regular goody black rubber bands that you should not be putting in your real hair ever, by the way. And that was it. And I left the details of the hair I used and how much and everything in the description box of my last video. I'll leave it here under this video again. Believe it or not, I'm going to highlight with Fuego from the Dose of Colors Desi X Katie collection. I do find that with a light hand and lots of blending, I can work with them. When I was editing the video, I noticed it didn't look nearly as ridiculously over the top on camera as it did in real life. But I do find that these highlighters do emphasize texture slightly, though I imagine if you used a lot of it, you would get even more texture emphasis. Anyway, getting back to this hair, 
It is fun. I mean, I like kind of ridiculously over the top hairstyles, my obnoxiously big buns, stuff like that. This is the longest hair I've ever had. And I've always, not always, but pretty much always worn stupid long braid extensions slash twist extensions because my feeling is I'm not trying to delude anyone into thinking it's my hair. So why not braid it down to my ass? This hair is down to my voice. It is long. So it's actually a bit cumbersome at times in daily life, but the absolute worst is when I'm working out. That's when I'm like, I regret this. It's just too much hair. If you're actually trying to work out hard and work out hard like I do, where I'm doing stuff like burpees and box jumps, stuff like that, it's just so much hair. It does get heavy. It's much like with the boho locks where if it's loose, it doesn't feel heavy at all. But if I put it in a bun, I feel like Miss Chiquita Banana or whatever that chick's name is, where I feel like I got a fucking fruit basket on my head. And even just trying to put it in a braid behind me, you know, it's still so long, it gets in the way. There have been times where I've been on the rower machine, you know, cause I do CrossFit and we use rowers a lot in CrossFit. And the hair is so long, it actually gets caught under the seat that slides on the rower. It's happened to me twice. So it's just kind of a pain in the ass. I more or less anticipated that it would be a lot to deal with, but even still, it's even more than I anticipated. So I had initially planned to keep this hair in for three to four weeks, and I'm going to stick to that plan because I can't imagine having to put up with this during my workouts for the entire duration of this challenge. For contour, by the way, I'm using the Kevin Aquan powder, but in medium. So I ended up picking up this little kit from the sales section of Sephora. I don't believe they have this anymore, but it's, a palette that has the medium sculpt shade, the starlight highlighter, the, his bronzer in Desert Night, and then a blush in Aurora. And I figured it would be a good way to try the medium powder and see if it would even show up my skin, which it does. I really like it for more subdued contour days. I basically, for wearing in real life. For on-camera gigs, I do stick to the dark powder. Bronzer, Hourglass. I'm sure you guys are sick of me talking about Hourglass bronzers, so I'm just going to move on. Do I need blush today is the question. I feel like I do, but something very neutral. I'm gonna go with my Urban Decay Video Blush. This is one of those perfect blushes for when you don't know what blush to wear. So what's new with you guys? How was your week? How was week one of the challenge? How was life in general? Hopefully you guys are all thriving and not just surviving. Lips. Now, obviously the instinct is to go nude for the lips because of this eye look being a bit much, but I think I'm gonna say fuck it and do a bold lip, bold eye, bold lip, right? Seems like as good a time as any to try out one of the matte liquid lips from the Desi and Katie collection. This is gonna be Sauvage. I am going to line my lips first though, because I've kind of been changing my lip shape just a little bit lately. As you can see, whenever I do my makeup, even though I roll my lips and when I do my foundation, I always get a little bit over the top. And one day, uh, mostly by accident, I kind of changed my Cupid's bow and it came out very kind of angular, very Rihanna-ish. And I decided to leave it and I actually quite liked it. So I'm gonna try to do that again today. I've been doing it a little bit lately. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the liner I used was much more uh, blue base, whereas this is a much more red base purple. So I probably will want to use a different liner next time, but I am quite in love with this actual color. The Desi X Katie collection will be getting restocked in September, which is days away. I don't know what the exact date of September the restock is going to be, but September, the month itself is just days away. So if you are interested, in this color or the highlighter or really anything. It will be back soon, so fret not. But no tea, no shade. This color is not unique. So I feel like if you wanted something like this, you could dupe it very easily. I'm sure other people already have. I also had a little bit of patchiness after I had done just one normal coat. So I had to go back in and just touch up spots that were looking a little bit less opaque. Just FYI. I'm going to let this finish drying down completely and then I think I'm actually going to go on top with a clear gloss just because with the matte eye I think I want a glossy lip rather than matte and matte. There you go. As you can see this is a very high shine lip gloss. I wanted something that really made it shiny. And we are done so let me get my hair down. Girl, with the amount of frizz I am getting on these twists after just one week, I'm thinking three weeks is probably gonna be more realistic than four. <sighs> Silky hair, it ain't for me. All right, y'all, I am officially ready. 
to go nowhere and just record another video or two. Really, this was more of just me playing in new makeup and hanging out with you guys. I actually am not planning to go anywhere. But thanks for hanging out with me as always. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you think I should haul some of the new crap that I picked up. You know, I showed you a few pieces today, but there's way more. Or if you think it's kind of weird and dumb and superficial and I shouldn't play into that game. Also, let me know how you're doing in the September shred. We're gonna be heading into week two. Week two begins on Monday. So if you hadn't participated prior, feel free to join now because that'll still give you five weeks, which is a tremendous amount of time to make some significant changes in your lifestyle and in your balancing. My goal is to do better in week two than I did in week one, and that will continue. I will hope to do better in week three than I did in week two, better in week four than I did in week three, and so on. And once I don't have these heavy ass twists in my hair anymore, I'm sure I'll be doing best of all. It's really a shame because when they're just down like this, they feel totally comfortable, but they're an absolute fucking nightmare to work out in. That is gonna do it for today. I gotta make sure I hop on filming my next video before the sun sets and I lose all of my light. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. That's a, that's a nappy-headed hose there. I'm going to take that down. <laughs>